Hey, what's up, Scott Ball? Come here with Imagination Creation Films, and today, well, we're reviewing and showing you a really cool lens. It's really long. It's really macro. Really. It's great to be back in the saddle again, doing exactly what I love, which is shooting cool stuff, learning new techniques, and sharing all of that with you. And before we dive into this review today, I wanna to go ahead and ask that you click subscribe, because this is a growing community of filmmakers, and I think you would be a great part of it. So what exactly are we reviewing? Well, it's a really cool lens, the Laowa 24 millimeter macro probe lens. And well, you, you really may not understand what it is until you see what it does. This is the Laowa 24 millimeter probe lens. Now this is a macro lens with a two to one magnification. It comes in EF and PL. It comes in regular photographic or cinemodded with gears on it. This one right here is the PL mount. And it also comes with LEDs on the front. We'll get to those here in just a minute. So what exactly is a probe lens and what makes it different than a normal macro? Well, a probe lens is literally a long probe of a lens and there's a lot of, I mean, a lot of elements in here that allow it to take a full frame image and go down to this tiny, tiny little end here. And it does it in a way that, well, it's, it's kind of amazing. For instance, this C47, let's just say this is the most exciting thing you've ever seen. It's so small and you want to take a nice photo or video of it. We'll just use this end of the lens because it's a typical size of a macro. So you get up to it and well, there you go. There's your angle. You got this really cool angle of about 30 degrees and that's the best you can do. You can't get a better angle on that. You can lift this up, but then you've got whatever's lifting it up on there and it's not true to its environment. With a macro, watch this, uh-oh, it's almost flat. And if you were to take it off to the side, well, you can make it completely flat. 
This it allows you to get really up close. In addition, normal macro lenses are telephoto in nature and by design, which means that when you are pointed at it like this, your field of view is very narrow. Uh, some of them are 60 to 100 millimeters, some of them are 180 millimeter macros, which means your field of view is exceptionally narrow. This is a 24 millimeter macro. That means it's a wide angle macro, which means when you put it down here, you see all around this. You see it's an environment, just like those ants. They were within three inches of that hole and you saw the entire surrounding. It gives a whole new perspective and life to you know, macro video and photography. Now, what's interesting about this is it's close focus is 0.458 meters. And before you start thinking, wait, that's, that's a long way away. Mm -mm. Remember, Focus is measured from the sensor. The sensor is back here, and guess what? 0.458 meters happens to be right here. So that means you can focus right at the tip here. If you scoot back a bit, it's a one-to-one -one life size uh, ratio. If you get right up close, it's two-to-one, so it has magnification built in. This is truly an amazing capable lens. Now, here's some things to think about when it comes with this lens. This thing is a light hog, and there's, there's no other way to describe that. It's not a bad thing. Every lens has its capabilities, and it's, you know, some of them are capable of really low light, others are not. This one is designed to be this small. And to do that requires a lot of elements in here. And when you put all that many elements in here, you're gonna lose light every single time. Now, this is an F14 minimum aperture on this lens, F14. Think about that. When you're out there with your camera in the daylight and you're trying to keep a 50th or a 148th of a second um, to get that nice motion blur, you usually, if you don't have ND, you're cranking that to like F16 or F14, somewhere in that area. And that just barely makes a usable image. And a lot of times it's not enough. So this, think about it, F14 means you start with the power of the sun. Now, what that means inside the studio here is you need a lot of light. And by a lot of light, I mean you need some 1Ks or better. I was shooting with a couple of 300Ds and it was just enough to make those beautiful images. Uh, you, you really have to plan ahead for the amount of light that you're doing. For instance, if you wanna shoot in slow motion, maybe those ants are really cool, but you wanna capture them with a little more slow motion involved. Well, you better add a lot more light because when you cut that shutter speed way up there to like 1 1 20th so that you can get that 60 frames a second. What if you're shooting at 120 frames a second and you're at 240th of a second? That is going to compound greatly. You're gonna need a five or a 10K light to light up your subject. Now, with that, you also need to keep in mind if you're dealing with tungsten, you might be dealing with heat. So keep that in mind when, when you're shooting with this. When you're out in the sun, you may actually need some reflectors to get uh, the amount of light out of this. Not necessarily. The sun, at, at, I mean, at F14, I was able to go to F22 with the bright sunlight and get all the shots that I needed but you could be in that scenario. So this thing eats light for breakfast, but the trade-off is you get a perspective unlike any other. Now, this is also waterproof all the way up to here, which means you can completely dunk that sucker in whatever you want and get a whole new view. Now, right here, you ask what this block is. I know you just asked, but I mean, I wasn't gonna to get to it yet, but I'll do it now. This is a USB connection. Why? Well, on the end here, there are several LEDs and they're pretty, pretty bright. Now, why are there LEDs here? For that exact reason. If you stick it underwater, if you stick it someplace where you can't get enough light, well, 
you need a little bit of light. Now these lights, these LEDs are tungsten um, and they're okay. They're not the highest CRI LEDs on the planet. In fact, they're quite not pretty at all. But when you're absent of light, it'll get you there. Uh, I use daylight in everything that I do, so it is uh, very easy for me to just throw out some, some lights. But this lens, it's really cool, and it's not that expensive. Under $1,500 for the Cinemodded version, and less than that for the photographic or just the, or the regular version. It is a really cool and competent lens. And I can absolutely tell you, the soonest availability I can get one, I will be adding this to my kit. And quite frankly, if you have any thoughts at all about macro, this is a lens that you should add as well. Now, what are some things to consider besides the light when shooting with this? Well, you have a long L, uh, lens here that if you're trying to handhold it, look how much movement exists at the end, whereas right here, this is stable. Well, for the most part. So even on your cameras that have in-body stabilization, you're not gonna be able to handhold this and get a really clean shot because that movement over here, which is you know, absorbed by the camera, is gonna be moving your world. And since it's 24 millimeters out here, it's really wide, so it shows up. So I would highly recommend mounting it to a tripod, or uh, if you're gonna use motion control, get a good, competent motion control. Something that can handle weight, something that can handle smoothness, and use that because it will show up. If you start and stop really fast, that jerk will, it, I mean, it'll get this thing vibrating, uh, and it takes a minute for it to settle down. Uh, if you're going to use a slider, don't get a cheap one. Get a good solid slider and add some weight to it. Put a sandbag on there. Reason being is that when you start it and you move it and you push it, you want to be able to compensate for your jitteriness because it will show up in the end. I promise you, there's almost no one that I'm aware of that's going to be able to handhold this and get you know, a good solid second or two shot. Now, maybe if you shoot it in slow motion and you've got a good grip on it, maybe you can get a little bit out of it, but it's going to be tough. So these are things to keep in mind, but your world is opened when you can shoot 24 millimeters wide angle macro two to one with a, a probe on it. So you get right up there. Your angles are amazing. The perspective that you can get is amazing. Everything about this lens is amazing. And does it sound like I'm excited about this lens? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little bit excited about it. Um, let's talk about the optics. The optics are quite sharp, especially for what this is. Now, will it resolve 8K? I don't know. Uh, I'm running 6K through it, and it seems to be doing it just fine. It's it's a nice it's a nice image. Um, the glass, the color of the glass, there is a little bit of a color that happens to it. Um, it's a slight brownish tint to it. You can grade it out, but I mean you just need to be aware of it. So it also, I would keep in mind your light quality. You want to make sure you put a good quality light on this so that it, it really kind of counteracts that brownness, but it will show up. So you got to kind of fight that a little bit. Uh, is it the end of the world? No. Is there anything like this for, I don't know, anywhere close to this price? No. So, I mean, I think the next closest one is about five times this price. I think it's about $7,500. Um, so keep that in mind. It's not the end of the world, but, you know, I believe in honest reviews. And, you know, if it stinks, I'm going to tell you it stinks. This doesn't stink. It does have a few flaws. And they're not flaws, but a few drawbacks. Light and the slight discoloration uh, and the brown, and then the, the LEDs here. Those are the negatives. The positives, it's a pretty clean lens. It does things like no other. It, um, it works. Uh, that is really what you're after when it comes to a lens of any kind. Does it work? Does it have the right character or motivation for your, um, for your shoot? Does it do everything that you need? 
This does everything. Give it the light, do a little color grading. You've got the most amazing stuff. Uh, and, and I can't really say enough good things about this. And this was on loan. I do need to return it now. Um, but I'm really happy that I got a chance to try it out because quite frankly, I probably would have sat on the fence for quite a while on this probe lens or whether or not to get it. And now that I have tried it, uh, I feel quite confident that it will be added to my kit sometime this year. Um, yeah, so what kind of things would you shoot with a macro probe? I'm really interested because this really opened up a whole new world for me. And I... Uh, I had often wondered, you know, what, what you could do, and it's, it's just amazing. What things can you think of to shoot with a probe like this? I'd really love to know. Leave that down in the comment section of what, what kind of shots you do. And I, I wouldn't worry about, you know, being the first. You know, it's, it's about sharing out here. And if, I guarantee if your idea is great and somebody else shoots it, you're still going to be able to shoot it yourself and it's going to look different and it's, it's still going to be yours. Don't worry about that. That's not what this world is about. It's about sharing. So leave that down below. And always, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section down below. I try to read and respond to each and every one, even if it's just to say thanks. I have a Patreon. I have a PayPal. I have Amazon affiliate links. They're all linked down below. If you want to support me, I greatly appreciate it. It really helps me you know, get lenses like this to try out and share that with you. And if you value what you see here, purchase something from Amazon down below or just you know send me a, a little tip in the PayPal or join me for one of my live sessions and use the Super Chat. It really helps. I appreciate it. Remember to subscribe to this channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. If you didn't like it, you can give it a thumbs down. That's okay. We can still be friends. Um, yeah. I mean, as always, as I like to leave it, don't let your passion center around your life. Let your life center around your passion.